How's it guys? Just welcome to the first tax intro. I'm gonna go I'm going to talk for about an hour on donations tax itself. I'm gonna try to give you an idea of what tax is gonna be like within a classroom environment for this year. Okay. So first topic that you need to do as part of your tap letters is donations tax. I'm also going to do an intro into tax with you and just actually try to explain to you how to approach this. So guys, some of you are CTA level one, some of you are CTA level two. Your syllabi are almost identical. There are some topics that aren't asked in CTA level two, so in CTA level one that are in CTA level two. So what's going to happen during the year is I'll give you advance notice and normally what will happen on an evening the CTA level one guys can choose to stay and do the topic that's not in their syllabus or you'll leave it about half past eight and the last hour and a half will be done for work. CTA level two guys. Stuff like your state duty is not part of the CTA level one syllabus. Transfer pricing. Some of the more complicated sections aren't in the CTA level one syllabus itself. So everything that's in the CTA level one syllabus is in the CTA level two syllabus. And then there are a couple of things that are added on to the CTA level two syllabus itself. Some of the more complicated things. So like exchange of assets for shares, you only need to do half of it in the CTA level one syllabus. There are two sections. What other section you need to do as part of CTA level two. So generally it'll get integrated. I always leave the CTA level two specific stuff right for the end of a lecture. But for the first test, Everything is the same for CTA level one and two. Obviously, the level of detail will be different. And also for CTA level two, it will be more integrated. So what tends to happen on CTA level one is they will ask you a topic. On CTA level two, they'll decide to mix three things together and see whether you can integrate the questions properly. Does everybody understand that? The way I do tutorials is traditionally I will start with all of the basic stuff. And at some stage, what I will do is I'll sit there and say, this is more likely to be like a CTA level two question. Now, CTA level one students still do those questions because there is a little bit of integration and it'll just prepare you for what might be called the really, really hard question inside your paper as well. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? So you don't know what's going to happen. And you know what the funny thing is? Sometimes I look at exam papers and class tests especially and sometimes I think that the level one question is so much harder than the level two question. So I don't know. It's like based on a lecturer's impression because I'm with students all of the time. I know what students find difficult and what they don't find difficult. But I've often seen CTA level one questions that are much harder than level two questions. It just depends. Okay. Adila? Oh, no, I know you don't have this. Okay, so guys, generally what's going to happen is on Tuesday, I'll hand out detailed sets of notes, okay? Today's a trial before you buy. I'm not handing out the full set of notes for test one. So traditionally, what will happen is you'll get a detailed set of notes, and you'll see that the set of notes is very, very detailed. So essentially, you can see lots and lots of topics. This set of notes runs to 44 pages, full discussions. The way that these notes normally work is there'll be a discussion and then an example. Discussion, then an example. So what you'll see happening is little examples all the way through. Now, depending on the topic itself, I might use these when I lecture in class or I might not. Does everybody understand that? Now, donations tax is very, very easy. So I'm still going to hand out this detailed set of notes to you, but I'm not going to cover it in a classroom environment like today. Okay? Because donation tax is actually very, very straightforward. Okay. If you have a problem, he has a nice detailed set of notes that you can go back and have a look at. It's nicer than silk, in my opinion, because discussion, example, discussion, example, discussion, example, discussion, example. So where you have a problem with a particular topic, go back here and look at the examples and see what you're going to do. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? However, what I'm going to spend a lot of time doing today is showing you how to prepare for an exam. Is that all right? So what I need you to think with tax is every single time I lecture you, I'm going to try to prepare you for an exam. So here's what I call a donations tax executive summary. This is a piece of pay this is the chapter that I think you should use when you're studying for your exams. Does everybody understand that? 
you don't have time to go back and actually look at a detailed chapter that's 40 pages long. Does everybody understand that? And normally what will happen with an executive summary like this is there will be a summary, and right at the back of it there's going to be a detailed example. You'll see that there's a detailed example. And this is what you should be using to <laughs> pass your exam. Now, guys, this is my little thing. So I like to call this like a little 90-10 rule. In 10% of the space, I'll cover 90% what's in the exam. Does everybody understand? It won't cover absolutely everything in your syllabus, but it'll cover just about everything inside here. Are you guys comfortable with that? Okay, I just want to give you an example for when I was at Varsity. They used to have this rating formula that you need to do use for lump sums. Okay, and no matter how many times you try to do it, you got it wrong. So if there's something that I know that no one gets right, generally I'm not going to try cause shit for you. Because you'll end up spending all of your time on the thing that you can't do right. Whereas in an exam, you need to do what you can do right and actually pass. So I'm just saying to you, in the executive summary, not everything is in there, but virtually... Everything is in there. Does everybody understand that? Remember that this is what you're going to learn off when you do your year-end exam. Does everybody understand? So if there's something that you want to actually make emphasis of, write on this one. Is that okay? I also like the concept of a stuff-up sheet. So what I basically do is every time you make a mistake, I believe you should create a sheet for donations tax and write down every mistake that you make, okay, and put it with this. Okay, and then what do you do? When you're learning for your exam, you'll learn this. You'll say, where did I make mistakes before? Read through all of your mistakes. And that'll be the best way that you can prepare. You also might find that certain things you don't remember properly. So maybe for donation sex, you don't understand the concept of what is maintenance and what is a donation. And maybe you're going to go into the section of the notes chair and start discussing what is maintenance and what is a donation. Are you guys comfortable with that? So maybe these notes aren't enough for you. They're enough for other people, but not enough for you. Go and write on this piece of paper. So think of this piece of paper as what I'm going to learn off for the exam. Does everybody understand? In addition to that, I've handed out something that looks like this. Okay? Now, I'm going to start talking about textbooks. Have a look at my notes. Okay? Lots of students believe that my notes are absolutely fine for tax and they don't think you, you, you don't need to buy silk, okay? It's your choice at the end of the day, okay? I know that cash is tight. You will get detailed notes for each and every single section that I do in tax. So I've got a nice set of notes. And my notes are different from silk. Silk, there's lots of writing. Mine are point, example, point, example, point, example. So basically, in them, I, think I find my notes much easier to understand. Please understand that in some of the really, really complicated stuff, Silk might go into more detail than I will, okay? But at the end of the day, as I said, you, Silk's written from a perspective that guys in practice will use it. I'm trying to get you through an exam. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? Okay. So Silk, your choice, okay? Look at my notes, make a decision, okay? As far as the other textbooks, questions in essay tax, guys? A lot of your questions from your assignments come from the question book. You need to decide whether you're going to share it amongst the couple of you or whether you're going to have your own book, etc. So in the first assignment, you'll see about a third of the questions come out of questions on South African tax. So you need to make a decision with that. I know a lot of people last year, four of you got together, you bought a book, and then you shared the book together because you don't use it very, very often. Okay, and then one thing you have to get, cycle legislation handbook, you have to get, okay, because you get to take it into your exam with you, okay, and you're not allowed to write in it, but this piece, this little thing that I've got here shows you what I think you should tag inside your cycle legislation handbook to make your exam better. So as I go through this lecture with you now, I'm going to show you how to pass the exam, okay. And I need you to understand something. You don't need to learn everything off by heart because you've actually got this in your book. You don't need to learn all of donations tax off by heart. You just need to know where to go find stuff. Is that all right? So this sheet, the way it works is I've got a section number. 
I've got what I think you should write down on your tag. So you're allowed to tag it. Does anybody have a tag textbook from last year? Anyone? You know, you get those little things that you can stick on that you can write on. So this is what I think you should put on the tag. You're allowed to highlight in your book. So this is what I believe you should highlight. Okay. But can you see I've got dot, 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 this, dot, dot, dot. So what I try to do is rather than highlighting the whole thing, I just highlight the keywords. So if you look at something, you'll be able to understand what it says. And then this, guys, is just why you're doing it. So while you're tagging, just so that you know why you're actually tagging within your book itself. Is that all right? And I'm going to come back to this now, and I'm going to show you how to actually approach something. Okay. So let's start. Okay. Donations tax executive summary. So it says donations tax is a separate tax levied on donations made by a taxpayer. Now, a lot of people think, remember, the donations deduction for companies and the donations deduction for individuals. That's not what we're dealing with here. Okay. This is a separate tax on donations. So let me just explain why you need a separate tax on donations. Imagine someone was dying. Okay, and they decided, I'm just going to give everything to my kids before I die. Okay, if there wasn't a donations tax, South Africa would never, ever collect a state duty. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? So, what they need to do is, not only do you need to have a state duty, which is when you die, but if someone wants to get rid of everything before they die, you need to have donations tax as well. So, as funny as it may seem, if you donate, there's a tax that you pay on donation. There's a second reason for donations tax, okay? I've got 10 million rand in the bank account, but I pay tax at 45%. My kids don't pay tax. So I can take some of my cash and give it to my kids, and then they get the interest exemption, and they get taxed at 18%, not at 45%. So why do you have donations tax? Number one, the estate duty implications, so that you can't avoid estate duty. Well, you can avoid estate duty, but you pay the donation tax. And that you can't transfer assets so that instead of me getting taxed at 45, my kids get taxed at 18. And with my kids, the first 100,000 that they earn is tax-free because they each get a primary rebate and they get an interest exemption. Does everybody understand? Do you understand why there's a need for donations tax? Is that all right? So that's there. Okay. So I've got, thus, when a donation takes place, consider the following. Now, guys, remember, you're going to be learning off this one for your exams. This is what I want you to take out and use to prepare for your exams. You're going to sit there and say, I've got three days to prepare for tax. I'm going to spend half an hour on donations tax, just to remind myself what's in the syllabus. So it says, number one, is donations tax payable on the donation? And I've got there, some donations are exempt. So, guys, there'll be donations, but we don't pay tax on everything. If I want to give to a public benefit organization, I'm not going to pay tax. So the government, if you want to give to the ANC, you're not going to pay donations tax. You can give to political parties free of charge. If you want to give to a church, you pay donations tax. Because churches, any religious organization can't be public benefit. Because it's discriminatory against atheists. And I kid you not. It is. It's discriminatory against atheists. So... Churches, you're going to have to pay donations tax on. Synagogues, mosques, any type. Even if you're a pastafarian, you pray to that big pastor God in the sky. You want to donate to the pastafarian society, you'll pay donations tax. Okay. No, it's been like that for a while. There's a whole lot of guys from... There were atheists that complained. So they took out... Churches are no longer public benefit. They're not part of the section there. Guys, and then I've got there, has there been a disposal of an asset which may attract either income tax or CGT? I'm not doing that today. I'm going to do it in about three weeks' time. So once you understand donations tax properly and that, then I will do the integration through where you've got donations tax and the disposal of an asset and CGT and all of the implications. You guys comfortable with that? Okay, good. If I'm going to donate an asset, not only is there donations tax, there's also income tax or capital gains tax. Does everybody understand that? And then, if there are capital tax gains tax consequences, remember that part of the donations tax may be added to the base cost of an asset. I haven't taught you that. There's a formula. Whatever you pay as donations tax, some of it can 
be included in the CGT cal. And I've just put it there, and you'll see there's a separate chapter that you'll put on the back of this. I've got two more chapters to hand out for donations tax, but it's once I've taught you income tax and capital gains tax, we'll go back and we'll integrate. Is that all right? So it's there. So let's start certain things. It says the donation occurs when there's a transfer of wealth between parties. Mr. A gives 10,000 to Mr. B. Transfer of wealth. Everybody happy? Some terminology. Person giving up the wealth is known as the donor. So I'm giving 10,000 rand to someone. I'm the donor. The person that gets it from me, the donee. So just to get the terminology right. And then I've got their donations tax is levied at 20% for the aggregate donations less than 30 million and 25% thereafter. So guys, you're on a clock. As you donate more over your life, eventually you will reach 30 million cumulative over your life. Are you guys comfortable? And then above that, it'll be at 25%. Are you guys comfortable with this? That makes sense. Okay. Donations tax requirements. Let's run through them. It says there needs to be a donation as defined. So it has to be a donation. So I'm going to go through here, and you need to understand how to actually do stuff. Here on this list, guys, section 54. Sorry, just let me change the view to make it a bit bigger. Sorry. There we go. So section 54 and 55. Can you see it says donations definition there? Okay. There's a donation it's definition. I've got highlight the whole donations defi definition. And essentially the donations definition is there must be a gratuitous disposal of property. Okay. So there needs to be an element of freeness. Does everybody understand that? So if you got into a discussion question in the exam, what I would expect you to do is to turn to section 55, go look at the donations definition and write it down and then apply whether there was a donation or not. Does everybody understand? So there needs to be a gratuitous disposal of property. Everybody comfortable with that? Gratuitous disposal of property. So do you see the donation? Are you guys comfortable with that? So do you understand why you would highlight it? So you'd be able to go there. There's no point in learning it off by heart. Just know where to actually go and find it. Okay, carrying on. Okay. So it says, a donation is a gratuitous disposal, including any gratuitous waiver or renunciation of rights. So there's the definition. So let's just go through three examples. Giving money to someone, is that a gratuitous disposal to someone? Gratuitous being, it's something for free. Is that right? Giving an asset to someone, I'll give you an asset. You can have my car. Is that a gratuitous disposal? Donations tax. Or writing off a loan owing. You don't need to pay me back. What happens if you write off a loan? Okay. That's gratuitous. Does everybody understand that? What happens if I sell something to you for too little? It's worth 100, but I give it to you for 10 grand. There's a 90,000 rand donation. There's gratuitous disposal bought in there. Guys, comfortable with that? And then, guys, it says there can be a deemed donation as well. Now, this is in section 58. So when you come down here, Deemed donation. Now look what I've got there. It says disposed, dot, 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 disposed, dot, 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 not an adequate consideration, dot, 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 be deemed, dot, 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 donation. So I need you to actually understand that what I think that you should do is there's a whole big clump there inside the actual cycle legislation handbook. Does everybody understand that? I think that if you just look at the highlighted stuff and it says they're disposed, not an adequate consideration, be a deemed donation. That says, if I sell something that's worth 100 for 10,000 Rand, what's going to happen? 90 is a donation. So I don't think you need to highlight that whole big section. I just think you need to highlight keywords. And that's why I've done it this way. Everybody comfortable with that? And then I've got there, next to it, it says, if you do not sell at fair market value, the difference between the fair market value and the amount that the person paid for it will be deemed to be a donation. You guys comfortable with that? So first requirement, guys, it needs to be a donation as defined, okay? And then at the bottom here, guys, I've got giving an interest-free loan is not a donation as defined. Now, technically, legally, it is, okay? But SARS has chosen not to tax it, okay? 
So if you had to look at gratuity, there is definitely gratuity here. But SARS practice is that do not tax an interest-free loan as a donation. Is that all right? Now, when you do trust later on, there will be tax. They've got other sections that deal with it, but not in donations tax. They've got section seven, okay, for guys that have done it. Guys comfortable with that? So, guys, there needs to be a donation. So, as I'm going through the points, guys, you'll see that what I've done here is if you get a theory question, I've got the donations tax charging section, okay? And can you see it says under any donation? That's why I've discussed what the definition of a donation is. So if you get into a theory question, I'm going to get into each one of those points that are there to explain each one of those points there. So if you want to make sure that you're answering a theory question properly, you just need to open up on section 54. What I would do for section 54 is I'd use different colors. Okay? And you need to make sure each one of the things that I've done there you cover inside a theory question. So you need to say, is this a donation? This is the definition, and let's discuss whether there's gratuity or not. Do you understand it's one of the points? Now, guys, this next point is not inside the theory, so you need to know this one by yourselves. So it says the donation must be made with pure liberality or genu genuine disinterested benevolence. Okay. Now, guys, this comes from the case law, so it's not inside the charging section. Okay. I just want to give you an idea. What happens with a BE transaction? You give something to somebody for less than fair value. Yes? Does that make sense? So often with the BE transactions, here, yeah, you're going to give you this, but it's going to be cheaper than normal. Guys, comfortable? So is there gratuity included inside that? There is gratuity inside, it in the, inside that. You guys understand? But what the courts have said is that for it to be donations tax, it must be pure liberality or genuine disinterested benevolence. Okay? Now, why are you giving the BEE shares away? Are you doing it because, ah, shit, I really care, or because you have to? In most instances, because you have to. And because there's no genuine disinterested benevolence, there's no donations tax. Okay, there's a lovely court case which I like, which just summarizes all of this up. Husband looked at his ex-wife and says, you're a really irritating human being. How much money can I give you for you never to speak to me again? And she said five million rand, and he wrote her out a check for five million rand and gave it to her. And SARS took him to court. They said, you need to pay donations tax on the five million rand donation. And he said, uh-uh, I'm getting value. <laughs> okay. And it went to court, and the judge, after meeting the wife, went, I can see that you're getting value. This is not a donation. Okay? And that wasn't treated as a donation. Are you guys comfortable with that? So there's got to be genuine, this, okay, this interested benevolence. So I like that one. This is like a ruled court case. Okay? So if you're getting something out of it, it's not a donation. Even though there's gratuity involved, does everybody understand? Okay. Next one. The donation must be property as defined. Okay, now guys, what happens if I decide to work for a charity for free? Is that a donation? It's not property, it's a service. Do you guys understand? So the donations tax section only applies to property. You've got to give property. Okay, and basically it says movable or immovable, corporeal, incorporeal, wheresoever situated. And again, guys, you don't need to learn that. You'll see there's a definition of property. And that's inside the property section. So I've got property definition over there. If you want to put that into a solution, go and actually find it. You don't need to learn it off by heart. Guys, comfortable? So let's just run through stuff. Giving of 200 to your daughter would be a donation of property. Money is property. Giving of a car to your son would be a donation. It's property. Intangible assets donated such as patents, donation of property. Rendering services for free would not be a donation of property. Because there's there. Now, can I just point out something to you? We've got lovely court case stuff with priests that have been sued by SARS. So let me tell you. So often there have been priests that have gone, shit, the church can't pay me. They can't afford it. So don't pay me my salary this month. Were you entitled to your salary? Therefore, it's a donation. Because 
So with services, you need to say, don't pay me before you do it. If after it, you say, shit, you don't have money, don't pay me, that's a donation. Plus it's gross income for the priest. So lots and lots of court laws suing priests for gross income and then donations too. So you earned your salary of 20,000 rand and then you made a donation of 20 to the church. Do you understand? So you've got to agree beforehand that the services are not going to be paid for. Is that all right? Because if you agree that they are going to be paid for, then it becomes property because you're entitled to your salary. Okay. Giving a low or no interest loan is not considered a donation of property. Per Section 7C, there will be an implication, but I'm not doing that today. I'm just making sure you understand donations tax. I'll do stuff with trust once I've done a little bit more with you. Guys, comfortable. Next one. Donor must be a resident of South Africa. Okay. Just again, I just want to show you that you don't need to learn this shit off for heart. There's property. Okay. And then there's resident. So if you know the charging section, you can just go and do a theory question without any problem whatsoever. So there's normally a charging section that I always will do with you up front. If you get a theory question, you just go back and make sure you cover each of the areas themselves. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? So only by residents of South Africa itself. So that's very, very easy. If you're a foreigner, don't need to pay donations tax. Are you guys comfortable with that? Is that cool? Next one, the donation must be accepted by the donee. If a, guy, a person doesn't accept the donation, there isn't a donation. Does that make sense, guys? Next one. It says the donation must be valued at fair market value. Again, guys, if you want to go do a theory question, fair market value, there's a definition for, there it is. And you've got that. You guys comfortable? Just one or two things there. Willing buyer, willing seller, dealing at arm's length, immovable pop. Pro farming property, you reduce it by 30%. Does everybody see that? So if you've got immovable farming property, and it's got to be commercial farms, is that all right? If you happen to live out on the plus, but you don't farm on it, it's not a farm. Is that all right? So it says here, you're going to reduce farming property by 30%. So fair market value, open market value, willing buyer, willing seller. Guys comfortable with that? I'm going to show you one or two implications now when I do an example. Okay, carrying on. Donation must be a valid donation, guys. So essentially, just let me explain. So you can either have a written donation, everybody comfortable? So when all parties have signed a written donation, that's when the donation becomes valid. Okay, if it's an oral donation, you have to take the property. Otherwise, the donation has not taken place yet. So if you've got a very, very sick relative that sits there and goes, Deary, <coughs> I want you to have the painting. <coughs> Take the painting there. If you come back later and the person's dead in their bed, no valid donation. It's only once you take the property that the donation becomes valid. So oral donations, take it now. Otherwise, you might not get it later. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? This makes sense, guys? Okay. So it's there. Guys, it says, if a special condition is placed on an asset by a donor, the condition will be ignored. Do you guys see that? I just need you to actually understand. You can't avoid donations tax by putting something in that says, I know the shares are worth 20 million, but you can buy for 3 rand 50. You will ignore that. Are you guys comfortable with that? Guys, happy with this? Okay. So that's there. Let's carry on. Consideration, market value. Guys, I just want to point out one or two things with this. Commercial farm property, 70%. Everybody comfortable with that? Guys, and then there's values of use of fracks and bare dominions. You'll see in your tat letter that it's a level one for board. You don't need to know how to calculate use of fracks and bare dominions. They'll give you the value in your questions. So you'll see all of the tat questions. They tell you what the value of the bare dominion is and the value of a use of frack. I just want to make sure that you understand the terminology properly, okay? So let me just explain. Generally, men are very, very insecure. So I'll, I've got some experience in drafting wills, okay? So men are always worried that their wife is actually going to go out and pump someone later and forget about their children and, I don't know, it's the most amazing thing. Women are only too happy if their husband finds someone else after they're gone. So women aren't like this. 
for a mentor I love to do in wills often is they say, I give the use of rock to my wife, but I give the bare dominion to my children, which basically means the wife can use it, but she doesn't own it. Just in case she finds that man that's going to make her change her mind and forget about her children. Are you guys comfortable? And, guys, that's the use of rock. Bare dominion is the ownership itself. Does everybody understand? So if in a question they tell you that, you gave a use of rock to your kids, there's a use of rock there. They get use. It's still yours, but they can use it. And value of it, bare dominion is total value minus the use of rock. Are you guys comfortable with that? Guys happy with this? Okay. Exemptions. Let's just run through some of the exemptions. I'm going to go through them. So guys, there's general exemptions and specific exemptions. Now tell me, which one do you think needs to be done first? Specific always before general. It's the same thing with general deductions and specific deductions. First, I look to see whether there's that leasehold improvements deduction. If I can claim it, I'll claim it because there's a charging section for it. If I can't use the leasehold improvement section, I will use the general deduction formula. Are you guys comfortable? It's always better to use the specific section before you use a general. Okay, because the general section is limited. If you're a natural person, you get 100,000 as an annual exemption. Is that all right? So I'd rather exempt it and then use the 100 for something else. For a company, you get a 10,000 annual exemption. Is that all right, guys? So there's 10,000 there. Now, specific exemptions include, number one, donations to spouses in terms of anti-nuptial or post-nuptial contracts. If you donate to your spouse in terms of an anti-nuptial or post-nuptial contract, no donations tax. Okay, it's the nature. I get she tax. You guys comfortable with that? No donations tax. Okay, let me behave. If you tell my wife what I do in class, I'm going to kill you. No, don't worry. <laughs> guys, donations to a spouse, no donations tax. Donations, mortis, casa, donation in contemplation of death. If I die parachuting, you can have my car. Okay? There's estate duty, not donations tax. The only reason he's getting your car is because you're dead. Are you guys comfortable? Or donations in terms of which a donee will not obtain a benefit until the, and until the death of the taxpayer. Estate duty, not donations tax for that. Five, donations cancelled within six months of coming into effect. If you make a donation and you cancel it within six months, no donations tax. Okay? This one's a bit complicated though. Just remember, you've got to pay donations tax at the end of next month. So you might have to ask SARS for your money back. So if you cancel it within that like, 30 to 45 day period, you don't declare it. If you cancel it after that period, you're going to have to go to SARS and tell them you've cancelled it and you want your money back. Is that all right? Next one, donation for the benefit of any traditional council or traditional community. So guys, you want to actually donate to the Royal Buffeting Nation. Go for it. To King Goodall, Zelatini. Guys comfortable with this. Next one, guys. Donation of property not located in SA, owned by a non-resident before becoming an SA resident. Do you guys know John Robbie? He was on 702. He was an Irishman, came to live in South Africa. Anything he owned before he came to South Africa that is located overseas. Just remember, it's got to still be overseas. You can donate without donations tax. Donation of property inherited from a non-resident. Again, it's got to be overseas. So anything you inherit from a non-resident. And then, basically, donation of property received by a person who was a non-resident at the time the donation was made. So the basic principle is anything that is overseas that you get from a non-resident, it's still got to be overseas. Does everybody understand that? So guys, if it is a tangible thing, it's like a desk. If the desk is overseas, you can give it and no donations tax. If you decide to bring the desk to South Africa, you're going to pay donations tax on it. Property has got to be overseas. And then guys... Number 10 says, donations of property in 7, 8, and 9 above that's been sold and replaced with property located overseas. So I inherited this, I sold it and replaced it with something else, but the property still got to be overseas. So anything you had before you came to South Africa, 
or a non-resident gave you, or someone died and you got it by inheritance, and the property is still overseas, you can donate it without paying donations tax. Okay, next one. Donation of cash of any property in 7, 8, and 9, which is there. Then, guys, donations to various public benefit organizations. So, guys, traditionally in the exam, UNISA is a public benefit organization because it's a public university. Political parties are public benefit. Okay? The government is public benefit. So, there's a list there. You guys can have a look at it. Okay? Not churches, eh? not any religious organization. So, guys, if you want to get rounded in practice, just set up a public benefit organization for Jewish people that live in Houghton. Okay. That provides to the community. That's a way of getting out of it. Okay. That's okay. But if it's to a synagogue or a church or Hindu temple or mosque, you're not going to be able to get the exemption. Are you guys comfortable? So there are ways of working around it. Next one, 13. Donations to a person where the person includes such an amount in their gross income. Let me just explain something. A bonus is a donation. Your tight-wadded boss who would never give you us in winter when he gives you that bonus and you almost die of shock. That's a donation. But it gets included in your gross income. Does everybody understand? So there cannot be a double tax on it. So they choose to tax it under gross income, not under donations tax. Because I pay tax at 45, whereas donations tax is at 20. They have a agenda. They'd rather collect more tax. Is that all right? So if it gets taxed as income tax, it's not a donation. Next one, it says donations to a person where the person includes the amount of such donation into their income in terms of a share incentive scheme. I'll do one in an example now now with this. Donation out of a trust, free. When you put it into the trust, you pay the donations tax. When it goes out the trust, there's no donations tax. Is that all right? Anything out of a trust, no donations tax. Donation of a right other than fiduciary to farming property by a farmer to his child. So when he goes, Jim, you can like to take your sheep and graze over there. No donation. All right. If he gives you the land, it's a donation. But if you want to go graze your cattle there, it's fun. Guys? Donation of land designated by the Minister of Land Affairs acquired by a beneficiary in terms of a land reform program. I call this the Robert Mugabe section. So what actually happened in Zim, believe it or not, is they took the farms away and then they made them pay donations tax when they paid, took the farms away. So this is the one that says that if we do decide to take your land, you're not going to have to pay donations tax. So Tabo and Becky actually got this promulgated because it caused huge consternation amongst the farmers. So not only did you lose your farm, you had to pay donations tax as well. So thank you, Robert, for your contribution to the South African Tax Act. Guys, donation by one company to another company within the same group of companies, that's a 70% holding in between. Is that all right? So you can transfer assets between companies without paying donations tax. Guys, maintenance contributions, can I please just explain this to you? Guys, so it's your child's 21st birthday and you give them a car. Is that a donation or not? Okay, so let me explain. You want to give them the car, it's a donation. If you give them use of the car, that's maintenance. Is that all right? So uh, maintenance, guys, you don't have to give them a car. You do not need to put the name, the ownership of the car in their name. If you want to do that, it will be a donation. Maintenance, something totally different. And you can't give your child a million rand a month to live on. Okay. Anything excessive will not be maintenance. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? But I'll do some examples now. Okay. Donation treated as a dividend by the company making the dividend donation. Guys, if it's a dividend, there's no donations tax. You only get taxed once. You can't get taxed twice. So if they pay the dividends tax, there's no donations tax. And then, guys, public companies are exempted from donations tax. It's not part of your syllabus. But if they tell you it's a public company, they do not pay donations tax. So basically, it needs to be owned by a very, very diverse shareholding. There's no like holding company, etc. That's what happens in practice, but it's not part of your syllabus. Guys, comfortable with this? Okay. Consideration three. Okay. It says there, the payments of donations tax, including a discussion of penalties for late payments. 
So guys, basically, I've already discussed this with you. It says for oral donations, it becomes valid when the property is taken. For written donations, when both parties have signed. Guys comfortable? Now in a question, they often tell you that you haven't declared donations tax. So not only do you need to calculate the donations tax, but what do you also need to do? Pay it late, interest. Guys comfortable? And if you try to hide it from SARS, normally a 200% penalty. Are you guys comfortable with that? Think of what happened with Julius. I think the original tax that was owing was $4 million that he didn't submit a tax return for. Does everybody understand? When you don't submit a tax return, that's considered tax evasion. So you've got the $4 million tax to pay, plus a 200% penalty, another $8 million makes it $12 million. Plus interest, which is about another 3.6, I think. So at the end of the day, instead of paying $4 million tax, you have to pay 15.6. So whenever they don't pay tax on time in a question, please would you just discuss penalties and interest? We thought, all right. Just as a, so often there's a mark or two added on where they say, you haven't done anything with SARS for donations during the year. You have to discuss the penalties and interest. Guys, next one, donations by body corporate on behalf of individuals. Guys, so I don't want to pay donations tax. I'd rather get my company to make a donation. If I get my company to make a donation, I pay the donations tax. Are you guys comfortable with that? Okay, I'll show you an example now. And then just a special rules, guys. Okay. Just look at the bottom one. Just look to see whether someone's married in or out of community of property. Because if they're married in community of property, okay, it's half yours, half theirs. Unless it's excluded from the joint estate. Are you guys comfortable with this? That makes sense, guys. Okay. Carrying on. Just a diagrammatic approach. Let's actually just have a look at this. So this is what you should understand. It says, number one, was the donation gratuitous disposal made or did the company make a donation at the insistence of a person? So guys, did I make a donation or did I get a company to make a donation on my behalf? If the answer to that is yes, next thing you need to do is consider whether the person making the donation is married in community or out of community. If you're married in community, only be half you, half your spouse. Is that all right? Next, is a person making the donation a non-resident? If it's a non-resident, no donations tax. If it is a resident, we carry on. Guys, the following must apply. It must be a gratuitous disposal, pure liberality or genuine disinterested benevolence, property, and all legal formalities need to be complied with. If all the requirements do not apply, it's not a donation. And then, guys, what's going to happen? Okay. Value at a fair market value. Are you guys comfortable? Is there a specific exemption? If there's a specific exemption, get it. If there's no specific exemption, then get a general, that 100,000 or the 10,000. Are you guys comfortable with that? And this is just like a little one-page summary of the approach that you need to take. But what I want to do now is I just want to come across here. Can you see for all of the exemptions, guys? There's the exemption section. And what have I got you to underline? I got you to underline donation tax shall not be payable. Happy? And your tax says exemptions. And look what I've got. Spouse under an anti-nuptial contract. Donation mortis casa. Benefits until death of the taxpayer cancelled within six months. Traditional counsel. There's all of the stuff worth outside the Republic. Voluntary awards, property. Do you need to learn all of the exemptions off by heart? So what should you do when you're doing donations tax in an exam? Open up your cycle legislation handbooks. You can have a quick look to say that's the charging section and you've got property under donation by a resident. Okay. I've got what the donations definition is, fair market value and the definition of property. They're all my exemptions. Donations tax avoidance, section 57, that's where you get your own company to pay. Okay. Married in community property, at the top there, you'll say, oh shit, I remember. If you're married in community, 50% off. Deemed donation, if I don't pay enough, it's a deemed donation. Liability, okay. Person liable, donor. But if he doesn't pay, the donee. 
When is donations tax payable? By the end of the month, following the month. Value of property, you don't need to know the stuff. Rates of donations tax, 20% over 30 million is 25%. How long do you think it'll take you to look at that? You can basically do the revision of all of donations tax within 30 seconds to a minute, provided you practice with it. So what I need you to do is go tag your book and work with your book next to you while you're doing donations tax stuff. You can always go and find stuff. If you're not sure whether something's an exemption, go look at the exemption section. It'll be there. Are you guys comfortable with this? This makes sense, guys? Okay. And then what I normally do, guys, is I normally attach a detailed example. Okay. Oh, by the way. I'll do this when I do tutorials with you, but for number crunch questions, how to approach it, and for discussion questions, how to approach it. I've already discussed it while I've got there, but there's a summary on how to do number crunch and discussion. Guys, comfortable? So here's an example. Now, guys, if you go through this example, it will cover everything inside your syllabus. Okay, so I try to put one of everything into the detailed examples. So if you want to just remind yourself on what to do, you can do an example. So can I ask you to open up on the solution, please, while I do this in front of you? And we're going to do it very quickly. So it's Harry and Zamanda is a 72-year-old South African resident that's a life assurance broker. He was born in the United Kingdom and moved to South Africa in 1970 and became an SA resident. He returned to the United Kingdom for five years in the 1980s before returning to South Africa permanently. So he was a non-resident. Okay. His wife died on 6 October, uh, sorry, he won 30 million in the National Lottery on 1 September 20X0. Harry was already a rich man who had been diagnosed with terminal lung cancer and decided to donate money before he died. Prior to this decision, he had never made any donations before. Sorry, just one thing as a practical, this is not part of your syllabus, but I will do a bit of tax planning with you. Guys, should you donate before you die? Okay. If you want to become a hospital, accountant and go to cancer wards, make friends with oncologists, this is what you can do. Imagine someone's got 20 million rand estate, or let's make it a 23.5 million estate, sorry. The abatement normally is three and a half million, which would leave you with 20 million for estate duty, times 20%, leaves you with four million estate duty. Does everybody see that? Should you donate before you die? Now, obviously, if you know you're dying, you're happy to do this. If you're not dying, then maybe not so. That's why I say make friends with oncologists. So well, look what happens here. You've got 23 and a half, guys. If I was to make a 16 million rand donation, I just want to just show you. 16 million donation. How much tax would there be on a 16 million donation? 3.2. Guys, comfortable with that? Now, because I'm dead, I am alive. I pay the donations tax before I die. Does everybody see that? So 23.5 minus 19.2 will give me 4.3 million. Abatements, three and a half. You see with 800K. And tax on 800K at 20% when I die is an ideal answer, obviously. Would mean that the estate duty is 160. So what would you rather pay? 4 million estate GT or 3.2 plus 160? So if you know that you're going to die, what should you do? Donate before you die. Because you get the donations tax as a deduction of your estate. That's the logic. Not in your exam. But if you, you know you've got lawyers that chase ambulances, you can become a CA there, chases cancer wards. Would you like to screw SARS one last time before you die? <laughs> okay. Okay. And not in your exam, huh? Okay. But if you practice, you should know that how to do that. Okay. Guys, it says his wife died on 6 October 20 X0. They were married in community and owned all assets jointly, other than a son being calm, which is left to Harry by his mother and excluded from the joint estate. He remarried out of community on 17 April. So if you go through this, guys, it's got one of everything. So I'm going to do selected ones. It says he donated 60,000 to his daughter Esmeralda. He had made no other donations this year before this donation. 
So guys, what happens with this is as follows. He's still married com in community of property at this stage, if you look at the date. So what do you do in the solution? 60,000 times half, 30. Is there a specific exemption for giving to your daughter? No. Therefore, because there's no specific, what are you going to get? General, 30,000. Happy. Next one, 7 September. He donated a Sunbeam Calm with the cost of 160 to his brother Charles. The car had a trade-in value of 90 and would be sold, sold by a motor dealer for 115. Assume 70,000 of the annual exemption has not yet been used, which is true. 100 less 30 gives you 70, yes? So guys, do we split this one? No, why? Even though you're married in community, what happens? It's excluded from the joint estate. When you're doing your wills, in my will, it says, I leave stuff to my kids and I don't care how they get married, it will be excluded from the joint estate. So if my daughter or my son wants to be stupid enough to get married in community, okay, I will fix that mistake for them. Are you guys comfortable? So if it's excluded from the joint estate. Now guys, what are we going to use? The 90 or the 115? And I just want to discuss this concept with you. Because it's 90, trade in, and 115 gets sold by a motor dealer. Which one are you going to use? Are you a motor dealer? No. So which one are you going to use? It's what the value is to you, not what the value is. Now, if you're a motor dealer, you'll choose the 115. Does everybody understand? So value is a very malleable thing. Open market value is different things to different people. So just remember, what is the open market value to me, not what? Do you understand where I'm coming from? So sometimes they do something like this. So then the 70 is done. To celebrate willing the lottery, he threw a party for his friends. Is that a donation? Guys, just because it's a donation stats question doesn't mean that everything's a donation. I'm having a party. That's not a donation. Come, you're going to have a jaw. Not a donation. Guys, comfortable. Gave his personal assistant Rose 5,000 to say thanks for organizing the party. What happens to the 5,000 with Rose? The bonus included in gross income. Therefore, it is a donation, but it's exempt. He sold his house in Schlanger to his mother for 800. The house was worth 1.8. Now, guys, even though it's a sell, because it's a less than fair market value, what are you going to do? How much is the donation going to be? It could be a million. Are you guys comfortable? His mother paid 600 and the remaining 200,000 was owed by an interest-free loan. Are interest-free loans subject to donations tax? No, but you need to write it down and put it there. So which brings me to a point, guys. Do you understand that tax is a legal paper? Is that right? So you need to write down what applies and what doesn't apply. Does everybody understand? So guys, a lot of you sit there and say, oh, there's no tax. I'm not going to write it in a solution. You should try to write something down in a solution because maybe there's a mark attached to it. They're not going to look at it and say, oh, look, he didn't write anything down. Therefore, he must understand it. You can only get a mark if you write something down. Okay, but we'll go into exam technique a little bit more. Okay. He owed a hun owned 100% of federal brokers. He does not work for the company. Federal brokers pay 50000 in university's fees for his best friend's son. If you own a company and you make a donation out of the company and it's at your insistence, there's no reason for doing it. If you carry on reading, it says the company gets nothing out of it. Who pays donations tax, the company or you? You pay donations tax. Are you guys comfortable with that? Okay. Okay, it says, in addition, federal brokers also bought Harry's son, Lem, a flat to stay in that cost 400. The flat was transferred into Gerald's name on that date. This has been treated as a dividend by the company. If it's been treated as a dividend, can it be treated as a donation? No. You guys comfortable? Now, do you see that? I've got lots and lots of stuff all the way down this example. Okay. Now, if you want to go through the example in detail, okay, in class, I will sit there and say, go on to the classroom. I've got the entire example here, that as an example. And if you want to do that, you can do it. If you read through it yourself and say, this is absolutely fine. I don't need to go through Stephen discussing this example. Then you can do that. Okay. But I've got limited time today. But can you see that I've got every single thing? There's some stuff in here that causes problems like this. 
12 June. Harry owned a mare, female horse, called Bluebell. His wife rode Bluebell every day. And his granddaughter was allowed to ride, to ride her on weekends. Bluebell was pregnant and promised his granddaughter she could have a baby foal if it was a filly when it was born. Okay. Now, guys, is that a donation? It could be if it's a girl. If it's a boy, he keeps it. So there's a condition attached. So you'll see that the donation actually only happens when it is a girl that is born, and he gives it to his granddaughter. Okay. There's another one in Saja where you've got shares in a share incentive scheme, but the terms have not yet come to fruition. It says you've got to work for the company for five years. So three years down the line, you give shares to your kids. There's no donation because if you stop working for the company, it's not worth anything. But what happens when all of the restrictive conditions fall away? Then there'll be a donation. Does everybody understand? So what I suggest that you do is just think about what I've just said to you. Think about preparing for an exam. What are you going to do for an exam? You're going to sit there and say, shit, I've got all of this stuff highlighted in my book and I need to understand all of it. When I learn for my test, so I've got test one coming up in six or seven weeks' time, I'm just going to go through the set of notes. If there's something in there that's not detailed enough, you need to write it down. Does everybody understand? So write on this piece of paper. You're not going to look at the detailed set and go through the detailed set again. And then I'm probably just going to read through that one detailed example because what's that detailed example going to do for me? It's going to remind me about everything, and traditionally, I try to show you all of the tricks. Does everybody understand the stuff that causes you tricks? And I know that I've got half an hour allocated to learn for donations tax, and I'm going to spend half an hour going through this and going through it, and then I should be okay. And you need to understand, you don't need to learn shit off by heart because it's sitting there inside your psycho legislation handbook. Are you guys comfortable? You get a number crunch question, you open up your cycle legislation handbook, just run through the exemptions quickly. It will take you 10 seconds, and you'll remember all of the exemptions. You don't need to learn that shit off by heart. Are you guys comfortable with that? You've got enough to learn off by heart this year. You don't need to learn the shit that's there in front of your face. Is this giving you a little bit of an idea? Now, what you'll see happening is I'll generally give homework, and we'll do some questions for homework. So traditionally, at the start of a class, I'll go through some examples with you. Is that all right? So what I'd like you guys to do is, can you please, for Tuesday, can you go through this example? And I'm going to carry on with this example on Tuesday. Is that okay? And we'll go through that just as a revision thing. And generally, the way that my classes work here for tax is, you'll have an example to do. We start off with a tax, and then we do new work. And then tax, new work. You guys comfortable with that? I haven't dealt with exam technique here. I'm going to do it when I do my math session in about an hour and a half's time, okay? Thanks, guys. Okay, so how much of a, I don't know what time it is. 